Hello, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julie. So now we're going to do a review of Draftosaurus's aerial show expansion. Hopefully you've had a chance to check out the how to play and play through, as well as the videos for the core game and the other expansion, uh, the marina. So this also comes with a different board that you put at the top. Now you can't play with both expansions. You would have the this one at the top and then the marina one on the bottom here. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, you also have to download the revised rules because the setup rules were adjusted and it includes rules when you combine them. However, I don't think this is correct either. So they're probably going to have to come with a new version to explain this better. Uh, but in any case, if you were to play this version, let me explain why they revised it. So you, start, you have 10 pterodactyl meeples. And uh, when you see the playthrough, you know, we remove two of each species for the two-player game. It's also what you would do for the four-player game. But you add two pterodactyls per player. And so on a two-player one, we'd only have four. And then the other six would not be played with. Now, in the original rules, we put them in the bag, which means you could draw a pterodactyl during setup here, which is what you don't want to do, which is <laughs> before I downloaded the revised, rule, revised rules, we did. Now, why don't you put them in the bag yet? Because you see these eggs, that's where you're going to put dinosaurs that will be born and placed into your zoo. So I'd be placing this one here and one here. So I'll eventually get a T-Rex and a Brontosaurus if I place pterodactyls in the right spot. And then Julie, Julie will going to draw. So she would also she would get a Stegosaurus and a T-Rex. Now we would place the pterodactyls in the bag, okay? And you do the same procedures. You're going to draw so many dinosaurs and place them uh, per turn. So what do you do with these pterodactyls? Well, when you place one, I'll show on the other camera here. Now it does come with five boards and it does have two sides. We're playing probably the more complicated side here with this branch. I recommend playing with this side. So let me explain the side that's on camera first. All right. So when you place a pterodactyl, You'll see there's numbers here. You have to start where the number is, one first. And then in this board, you can do either go 2B or 2A, or yeah, either 2A, 2A, or 2B. So my first one that I place, I'd get my T-Rex. So my T-Rex would be placed into the zoo wherever I want. Then this, if I get a second pterodactyl, I can go here here or here. So I could get my second dinosaur or you'll see here every orange dinosaur will be worth one additional point if I place a pterodactyl there. Here I'll get three points for every pterodactyl in the player to my left's zoo. So if Julie is to my left, if she had two pterodactyls I'd get six points. So let's say I did go here. My, But here's the thing with this, the branch. If I go here I can't get to this nest because you have to follow the path. I would have to place another one here or here to get to this one. So it would take me four pterodactyls to get to that nest, which is worth seven. Or I can just not go to that branching one, go here. I'd either choose this one or this one, and then go there. So it would take three pterodactyls to get to the top nest. On the other side, which I recommend playing with, it's just one path. You either choose this path right here uh, for one well, they're all the same path. You either choose this one or this one. You either make your green dinosaurs worth one additional point, or you get an, your egg, your baby dinosaur. And then the second pterodactyl you, you choose, you either get three points, or you get another baby. And then if you get up to the top, which would take your third pterodactyl, that means you ignore, for the rest of the game, the uh, placement die. So you don't have to worry about uh, following the rules in the placement die. So that's basically how you play. Uh, there's only four, you know, two per player. There are opportunities to get more, obviously, in a three, four, or five player game. Because you could draw more. All right. All right. So let's take a look at, uh, we give our positive neutrals and negatives, yep. and then we give a rating on the BGG scale. Okay, you guys ready? Here so we start go. start with Julie. Yay. All right. Um, I think, yeah, I like this because it does, expansion does add to the scoring. So it's, again, more ways to, to another way to, to get more points. I think the pterodactyl meeple, it's just really cute. And for me, and this is just a neutral, and again, this is just for me, 
I did find that this was this new edition could be a bit confusing um, because there's just a lot going on. You know, you have to worry about this, and then you're still worrying about this, and then if you're playing down here, well, you've got that Baltic to worry about. Yeah. And um, which we did do once, and it was just extremely confusing. And even still just playing with this one, I still get a little lost on what I'm supposed to do with my dinosaur when I get my pterodactyl there. So when you watch the playthrough and how to play, you will see me asking David, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Because it's just a lot for me in this. Again, it's just for me. I have to remember. But I do like it. I think it's a lot of fun. It just, maybe with more practice playing it, it won't be as confusing. But for right now, with it just starting out, I definitely need his help in <laughs> what to do. <laughs> well, it's uh, you just need more repetition. Mm -hmm. So that was maybe the second time. It's only the second with time, you. yeah. So yeah, and that's going to happen with any new thing you introduce. You just need mm -hmm. you just need more repetition. I need a lot of repetitions. All right, so let's take a look at what I have. Because if we don't play this again for a while, I'll be lost no, you'll, again. You'll, yeah, you'll need help again. Mm -hmm. No big deal. You just need help. Yeah. All right, so it adds scoring possibilities without being fiddly. And that's nice because uh, some games you add in expansions and you're like, I don't want to play with the expansion because oh. it adds too much crap to deal with. Okay, so limited countermix. Mm. Unlike the uh, the uh, Plesiosaurus in the... Oh, the Marina? The Marina. Yeah. You can get more of these out. So there's more opportunities to use this expansion. True. Whereas this one right here, when you only have four in the bag for a two-player game, you might not, and then you might not draw them Somebody could discard them. Yeah. Uh, so it's cool, but you might not get to use it if you don't draw it or or, or discard it. Mm -hmm. No, three, I four, or five. Yeah, yeah, three or four, or five player game. I think there's you'll get more opportunities to use them. But I'm neutral about it. That's all. I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Just realize that you might not. Some games you might not use it much, and some games you use it more. True. And like I said, uh, Julie said it's quality meeples, and it's a negative revised. You need revised rules. I don't know what the deal is with this company. <laughs> the core game needed a revision. The misprinted die. These expansions needed a revision for each one. And then I don't think the playing with both expansions is correct. The reason why it's not correct, because if you're playing with two players, it tells you to put eight Plesiosauruses in it now. Okay? And then you're going to put four pterodactyls into it. So now you have t you, now you have an uneven mix. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. So you'd have to put only four Plesiosaurus and four Pterodactyls in it yeah. to make it work. But it doesn't say that. So I think they're going to have to revise their rules again. So whatever. Uh, <sighs> this game, I mean, this company needs to get their act together. It's not that hard. It's not like you're writing rules to a war game, okay? But even war game companies get their rules mixed uh, up. Uh, they, they'll send it out to play testers and they'll do a lot more play testing. And you're talking 20, 24 page rule books oh, and wow. they don't mess up as much as what you see here. So it's kind of, uh, we're going to keep that in mind when we buy a game from this company again. Maybe we shouldn't get the first first edition. We'll just wait for the second edition. Maybe, yeah. We'll wait for the reviews on it <laughs> before we buy it. All right, so let's see what we have, where okay. our rating is. What our rating is. Oh, we both said seven. Yeah, the other expansion we said eight. Yeah. Uh, just because there's limited counter mix with two players. It, mm -hmm. You might not, get it, might not get to use it as much as the other one. It's kind of an afterthought, but... It's, I mean, it's still fun. I think I like the other one. I, I know I do because I rated yeah. it higher. I like the, um, what are these ones called again? The Marina one. The Marina one. I like those. But I love, I just love all the meeples. I love all the dinosaurs. I just think they're just really cute. So if I were to suggest, if you're on a budget, get the Marina one first. Yep. And then maybe get the area show later. Uh, if I had one to, to play over the other, I'd play Marina over the area show. And if I wanted, you know, we'd probably play with both anyway. But that's really can be very complicated, though. For well, me. <laughs> you just need more repetition. I do. All right, so thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. We hope you really like this. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. All right, bye bye. Bye.